I wanna love like I've seen in the movies That's why I'll never That's why I'll never Hi, I'm Leve and welcome to my creator That's session. Today we're gonna talk about the importance of adaptability, social media as a musician, and bringing old musical traditions into the new world. That's why I'll never fall in love. That's why I'll never fall in love. That's why I'll never I've rejected affection for years and years Now I have it and damn it, it's kind of weird He tells me I'm pretty, don't know how to respond I tell him that he's pretty too, can I say that? Don't have a clue with every passing moment, I surprise myself I'm scared of flies, I'm scared of guys Someone please help Cause I think I've fallen in love this time I blinked and suddenly I had a valentine Bum ba da, ba da ya ba ba da ba 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 ya ba da ya ba 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 ya ba 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 ya ba da Ba da ya ba 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 da What if he's the last one I kiss? What if he's the only one I'll ever miss? Maybe I should run I'm only 21 I don't even know who I want to become I've lost all control of my heartbeat now Got caught in a romance with him somehow I still feel a shock through every bone When I hear an I love you Cause now I've got someone to lose The first one to ever like me back I'm seconds away from a heart attack How the hell did I fall in love? This time and honestly I can't believe I get to call you mine I blinked and suddenly I had a valentine Valentine is a funny one because I kind of wrote it as a almost as a joke on Valentine's Day last year. And I remember thinking like, how would I react if I had a Valentine right now? Like if I had a, you know, a, a significant other and for the first time. And I'd be like highly avoidant probably. I'm like so inexperienced that I just like wouldn't know how to act. And, and um, so I wrote a song about it. My fans seemed to really like it and it kind of had you know, it um, kind of like started garnering uh, quite a few views and stuff. And 
a lot of my fans were messaging me like, when is it gonna come out? Like, when's the song gonna come out? And I hadn't even finished the rest of the song. So, um, but because of the good response, I finished the song and then I released it a year later and people still remembered it from then and were really excited about the release. So I think the biggest thing I learned about the whole Valentine project was that um, kind of like the power of a fan base, you know? And it's like, putting that song on the internet, I wasn't expecting it to be anything that I was gonna take seriously. And then it ended up being, you know, one of my favorite singles. I love Instagram and TikTok because that's where I even, you know, got to have this career, I would say. I started the Leve project in from my bedroom. I wanted an outlet to kind of express myself and I guess there were a lot of bored people at home that um, wanted to, you know, find entertainment online and and it's um and it was so it's so fun the way that the amount of reach you can get. Like I managed to kind of like start a community online. And from the very beginning, I've had like, my fans have been so involved in my work and my like decisions about which songs to put out and like which songs to finish. Like after I write a song, I'll almost always like turn on a live stream. Um, and I'll play it and I'll see like the response and the comments and stuff. And I can always gauge like which ones are like extra special. And like, and I'm like, okay, I will record that song and I'll release it. And I really kind of like, I'm really thankful to have that. Also just my, my whole goal as a musician is to take classical and jazz traditions, this, this music that I grew up loving and introducing it to a a younger audience and kind of taking away like the honestly like the snobby shells of those genres and um, kind of want to make it more accessible for a younger generation and TikTok and Instagram have been such a great way to do that because you know I posted little snippets of um, my originals that sounded old or jazz standards online and and I'd get these comments from uh, from my fans saying like, oh, this, what is this, uh, what is this genre? Or this sounds like something from an old movie or something that my, my grandmother used to love. And, um, and I realized there's like this whole generation that has an appreciation for this music, but they can't quite put their finger on like what it is. And that, you know, really helped kind of like drive my ambitions, but also just feed into my goals of, you know, giving these traditions these like classical and jazz music a new life and kind of keeping keeping it alive I think just because I started from the very beginning with my fans like I grew kind of my fan base and then started releasing music I think like I feel so tied to them I love um DMing them and also a lot of my fans are musicians which makes me really excited because when they post like covers of my songs which is still mind-boggling to me because just a couple of months ago it feels I was you know posting covers of songs from my favorite artists and and I, I still remember like like the excitement I would get when one of them would like interact or like comment or, or like the video and and that would be the biggest encouragement for me so I just yeah I, I think one of my favorite things is like interacting with my followers like on on their covers for example that they post and like commenting and just talking about music in general um sending music recommendations when when my fans ask for them or or um or even like book recommendations or like coffee shop recommendations just like I don't know I just feel like they're all my friends and and it's it's so crazy I feel like now I have like a certain certain power almost to to influence in a way and to and to teach and also just to you know reply to someone and and make them happy and like it feels like a couple of months ago I was you know on the other side of that and and I think it's just I think it's the coolest thing so I just I just really like interacting with them in any way possible I was I was really worried for a while that I would kind of feel almost like a different weight um having more people watching and a team around me and and um 
I was almost scared that, um, that I'd feel like this immense pressure. But I think the way to keep myself grounded and, and reminder of what I do is, is honestly my fans and also just my own intuition. So like at the end of the day, the best thing I can do for myself is, is, um, is what I, what I really love and make the decisions that I want to make. And, and I found that my, my fans, what they like is just what I like, you know, like they want me to do what I want to do. And, and, and the same with my team, like they want me to do what I truly want to do. So I just remind myself, I can't make a mistake or do anything wrong or upset anyone if I'm following my own intuition. Next we have James. My diss track. I spent months gazing at him sitting across the hall. His dark hair, his glasses, perfect overall. He looks so serious. He was mysterious. One Tuesday he caught me sneaking in a stare. He shot me a smile and nearly tumbled out my chair. He said, who are you? My name is James. That's when I fell into the flames. Turns out he's a fool, that James. Oh, James. Oh, how I wasted my days. Oh, dreaming, dreaming of James. He said, Do you like music? They're open late tonight How about we go together Just you and I And maybe we can grab a drink or two I'd like to learn about you But James just thought it was alright To go ahead and talk about himself all night Then he really felt he had to say That he'd be a billionaire one day Turns out he's a fool that James, oh James Oh how I wasted my days Oh dreaming, dreaming of James My eyes rolled to the back of my head It seemed like the night would never end At one point I just stopped listening His voice just became too sickening. I think from from writing James, I kind of just learned that I could could you know that these songs could have kind of like a comedic value. Like it's not that serious, and and um, which is actually one of the things I do love about jazz. A lot of the songs are kind of funny, and. Um, yeah, I just like kind of try to keep it light and um, not too serious. I will take the actual person that this song is about. I will take that name to my grave. But um, it's kind of like a, it's a bit of a satire, just like kind of on this certain type of guy that I've encountered on dates one too many times where it's like, where they're like very, they have like a very big ego and talk a lot about money and like, about themselves and and um and it's it's funny it's kind of I'm honestly I'm kind of like poking fun at myself for even going on those dates at the first in the first place but it's just about this certain kind of shitty guy has your cultural backgrounds informed the work that you make and if so how cultural but ba- yes definitely um coming from Iceland I think it's such a small musical community and everyone like mixes together a lot. So like 
the cl- like my mother she um she's a classical violinist but i so i grew up watching her playing a classical symphony one day with iceland symphony and then the next day she was playing a rock concert or with a pop musician and it's the same like the pop musicians will collaborate with the classical musicians and everything's just so mixed up because there's so few people and so the result is this icelandic sound is kind of like very um, the walls between genres are very, very vague. Everything is kind of like mixed up. And I think from growing up in that community, I kind of, you know, learned learned that, just like mixing these genres together. So that's definitely what I learned from there. From my Chinese background, I mean, I think I learned just kind of a lot of discipline and kind of how to apply that into this, you know, kind of funny career choice. Um, but also like my Chinese side is where all, all, all my music comes from. My grandparents were musicians as well. And, and, um, they actually were, were professors of classical music during the cultural revolution in China. And they weren't allowed to play Western classical music for, for years. And, um, it was just banned. And after that, they've kind of just instilled in me like this this great appreciation for being able to play whatever music you want and and play this like very, you know, romantic music. And um, I think I've carried with that, uh, carried that with me until now. I mean, I'm so, so lucky to get to play whatever music I want and mix it up however I want and write about whatever I want. Um, something that someone so close as my my grandmother who I still talk to every day didn't get to do for many years and my mother yeah it's such an interesting mix of cultures there it is I'm in a state of constant cultural confusion (laughs) all right so tell me about your biggest musical inspirations and how they have um inspired your sound I mean my first like kind of big musical inspiration was definitely Gershwin I grew up playing cello and piano like very classical and um, Gershwin was kind of my first entrance into this like classical jazz world um, or almost like it was almost pop at that time. And um, and then the music was in like musicals like American in Paris, which is one of my favorite musicals ever. All these beautiful songs and it kind of um, it felt like and then I started listening from that to like Elle Fitzgerald and Billie Holiday and Chet Baker, which are my favorite jazz musicians now. And it felt, it felt like this middle ground between classical and jazz that felt really familiar and also very romantic. And um, that's kind of like where I fell in love with, with that kind of music. And then I'm also very inspired by um, some of these like French impressionist composers like Ravel and Debussy. I just think you know, the the sound must have been a shock at the time, but there's something about it to me that is, like, sonically, like, so warm and interesting, too. Like, like Ravel's piano concerto, like, that second movement is, um, has been such a great inspiration to me. I think it's, like, it's jazzy, and I think that's so cool. I love it when everything's, like, kind of mixed up a little bit, and I love when the classical musician, uh, classical composers break some rules makes me feel better about what I'm doing. Next time you go to a gallery and you're uh, looking at French, like impressionism, like listen to some Debussy or Ravel and it will elevate the experience, I promise. Creator Sessions is brought to you by ConvertKit, the creator marketing platform. And at ConvertKit, we believe that the future belongs to creators like you. That's why we invest in this series. By sharing the more intimate details of the creator journey, we inspire and encourage more creators to follow their passion because creator shape culture and culture shapes the world. So whatever your craft, our creator marketing platform can help you share it with the world. Click the link to learn more about how ConvertKit can help you earn a living online. Next up is Everything I Know About Love. So enchanting in every way. It's everlasting every day. Sweet obsession, rose bouquet. Oh, it's heaven 
or so they say. I wouldn't mind. I heard that falling fast is so divine. Are these songs just telling plain old lies? 'Cause that's everything I know about love. Everything I know about love, I don't know that much at all. I trip, I fall every time I try. It's all too much. That's everything I know about love. Captivating angel eyes, stomach sick with butterflies. When will someone prove to me that this isn't fantasy? Cause I. That falling fast is so divine. Are these songs just telling plain old lies? 'Cause that's everything I know about love. That's everything I know about love. At all, I trip, I fall every time I try. It's all too much. That's everything I know about love. Everything I know about love. That's everything I know about love. Everything I know about love is、um, is a song I wrote with、uh, Leroy Clampett, and、um, it was our first session together. And I walked in and I told him kind of all about my life, and I was telling him about how I'd、um, I don't think I've ever really ever properly been in love, but I have heard all these.、Um, you know, everyone, all my friends that are in relationships always tell me like it's so wonderful and. And you know it's this and that and it's like heaven and and I was just like I've I've never experienced that like everything I know about love is just like kind of bleak so far or just something that I've seen in a movie so that's what I wrote the song about it's like I list up all these grand things that I've learned and heard about love but never experienced myself like I say I don't know that much at all from writing that song I think I learned. Kind of the magic of collaboration. That was one of my first co-writing sessions, and、um, I think for a while I I was so stuck in my own world and felt that my sound was almost scarily different. That I would be difficult to work with. I'm definitely better at writing alone. I would say, or or it's easier for me rather.、Um, I think especially because my songs are so personal, and many of them just come from my journal entries. Um, it's definitely harder to, for me to write with other people, but it's a lot more rewarding, and I find that the payoff is、uh, greater. But through that, through writing this song, I I really learned that there's so much so much potential for new inspirations and kind of like expanding on my sound, which I'm I was really excited about, and I'm happy to continue doing that. Upon moving to LA last year, I. Went into a lot of sessions and tried working with a lot of people. And some sessions we didn't make much music, but I made a great friend and a great、um, a great friend out of them. And then some sessions I found a great musical collaborator. And and one where I really feel like I landed on a great collaborator was、um, was with、uh, 
one of my producers, Spencer, Stu Spencer Stewart, who produced Valentine and um, I collaborated with a lot on this album. Um, it was just like, I'd been searching for this kind of musical soulmate and and I walked into the room with him and and to be honest, I wasn't expecting that it would be a great match. Um, it was just like instant. I remember I walked in and and he was, we started talking about like our favorite classical composers. We were talking about like Ravel and Tchaikovsky and and uh, Stravinsky. And I was like, okay, yeah, this this one's a keeper. <laughs> we will have stuff to talk about which is so telling of like I, I always just say you know if you're not unsure about like whether you should work with a person or not because maybe their previous work doesn't reflect what you want or whatever that like that is no reason not to like go and meet up with that person and see what you can do because people have or artists creatives have so much more in them than just what they've presented to the world already my advice is just to like go go to that go meet with that person that you're unsure about or go to that session because you never know when you're gonna run into a great collaborator. It's like speed dating. That's what that's what my manager told me when I started because I was going to so many sessions and a lot of them were were really great, but I still hadn't found like I hadn't found my footing yet. And I remember I called my manager and I was like, "What what is going on? Like I feel like no one can work with me and." And I'm, I, I'm so, I don't want to be difficult, you know, and, and I remember he said, you got to kiss a lot of frogs. And, um, and he's right. With both dating and finding musical collaborators, you got to kiss a lot of frogs. One thing that has been really important to me this year is kind of accepting that you're not going to be at your best creative self all the time. Like you're going to go, or I am going to go through weeks where I find no creative inspiration and then I'll go into a couple of days where I feel like writing five six different songs every single day and I feel like I have an end endless stream of inspiration and that's kind of like the difficult thing about being a creative you never know when it's going to strike you um, as much as you should and can discipline yourself into working every day and uh, working towards you know writing something or, or f f getting some ideas um, I think accepting kind of that c uh, creative ideas come in waves is like kind of the first step because I think one of the worst things we do to ourselves as artists is kind of like to to get upset at ourselves when we feel like we can't create. I mean, that's just detrimental to to your artistry. So that's that's that would be my first step. But my my other advice um, is just or or something I've been telling myself is just like, as long as you're happy with what you're creating, it's good, you know? We're in an industry, um, or art, it's just, it's so subjective, you know? One person might love one thing and another person might love another and and you might create something that you hate but other people love. Yeah, it's just so subjective and everyone's gonna say something different. So I think the best thing you can do for yourself is just to stay true to yourself and like, what you really love and what really feels right, use that as a guiding light. I've um, I've definitely felt that, you know, when making, I'm already just terrible at making decisions just as a person. I'm very indecisive, very anxious. But um, I find that at the end of the day, if I love it, I'll, I can like release it, you know, if it's like a song. And, um, and if I don't like it, I'm not gonna release it, you know? It's um, so my own, just use your own intuition. You can never get mad at yourself and you can never regret like what you've truly like decided for yourself or what you love. You can't, like I can't get mad at myself for um, for making a decision that I wanted to make in that moment, you know? I made it for a reason. Move on. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll fall in a bookstore Into the arms of a girl Or sneak into bars and gaze at the stars Surrounded by fireflies Oh, I'd like 
like to sleep until two on a Sunday and listen to the bluebird sigh. Get soaked in the rain and smile through the pain. Slow dance under stormy skies. Maybe I'm just old fashioned. Read too many fairy tales. It's no wonder I've had no luck. No one's ever good enough. I want to love like I've seen in the movies. That's why I'll never fall in love. Maybe I'm just old fashioned, read too many fairy tales. It's no wonder I've had no luck. No one's ever good enough. I want to love like I've seen in the movies. That's why I'll never. That's why I'll never. That's why I'll never fall. That's why I'll never fall in love. That's why I'll never fall in love. That's why I'll never fall. I wrote like the movies um, because I watched I watched a lot of romantic films growing up that kind of um, gave me this like unrealistic sense of what love is like, and um, and I I remember I joked one day to my friend I was like oh that's why I'll never fall in love I watch too many movies so I thought I'd write a song about it so it's kind of just like this very over romanticized kind of life that I imagined. <laughs> I think from writing that song, that was the first song I wrote that was in this kind of jazz standard form. And from writing that song, I kind of, you know, figured figured out that I could in, in this year write a song that was in the same form as something that was written in the 30s or the 40s, something that was written by um, these old composers that I really admire. A lot of people also say like, oh, you're born in the wrong century. I'm absolutely not born in the wrong century. There's no other year I'd rather be a woman and a musician. Um, very much a 21st century girl, but I love, I love the sounds of, sounds of old music. So just try to mix it together, you know? The reason I look to the past is that's just, um, that's just my favorite kind of music. I grew up listening to a lot of classical music and jazz music and, um, and I just loved how they told these really grand stories within just a couple of minutes. And I wanted to bring that tradition kind of into the new world, um, bring the magic of that time into this world, but of course, without the problems of that time. Just for example, writing these songs that somewhat, um, that are, you know, inspired by jazz standards, a lot of these <laughs> jazz standards have kind of like sketchy lyrics that aren't the kindest towards women or or um, certain people or traditions and I think 
you know, re- uh, writing in that style, but without without those problems of the past is, is something that I try to do. Looking back to older creators for inspiration is, um, it's an interesting one because there's so much to be learned from them. I think we learn from um, what we love from them, but we also learn from their mistakes. So I think just to, yeah, just to kind of like, not only look at like the really, really good parts of it, but also like, you know, the places where they may be misstepped and see how you can change and and make it something even better. You know, uh, creators that have been doing this for for a long time, I think something that is a very new concept is kind of like this world of social media, right? And, And this kind of like very fast, you know, landscape that we live in, like an app or a music kind of platform or whatnot will be in and out within one or two years. So I think it's just like kind of learning to adapt. For example, like when TikTok came along, like I think a lot of artists who had been um, working previously and doing fine without TikTok were kind of like, oh, I have to like figure out how to use this and whatnot. And I totally understand why that would suck. But I think one of the best skills you can adopt is learning how to use those and, and learn how to change with the landscape quickly you know, and, and kind of like allowing yourself to learn from younger people and not, not like deciding immediately that it's not for you. You know, I've, I know so many people that just like decided immediately, like, oh, that's just not for me. That's like for younger people. But I think if you can kind of like jump on trends and attempt to learn them, however silly you may feel, I think that that will be the greatest benefit. Because I think as we continue into the future with, um, music and creative spaces, I think it's going to continue to change so rapidly.